Hello everybody and welcome into a brand new Civilization 6 tutorial. This time it's a real quick, real easy one on how to use bombers to achieve a domination victory. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you so much. About a week ago, we hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. From that, I was able to apply for the YouTube partnership program and we have been accepted. It has been an absolute joy to make content for you guys and I can't wait to see where the content and where the rest of this channel goes in the next year, couple of years, whatever it is. But I just wanted to give a big thank you to all of you who've been supporting the channel, who've been commenting, who've been subscribing, who've been joining the Discord, who've been coming to check us out live on Twitch, which is a great time, you should do it. It's in the description below, twitch.tv slash vanbradley. You guys have really helped make such an amazing community and I, I couldn't appreciate it more. So thank you uh, so much for, for allowing me the chance to be a YouTube partner. It's been an absolutely incredible ride and I can't wait to see where it goes. A lot of people in the Civ community, especially newer players, always ask me, hey, how do I win a domination game? I'm struggling. I'm not understanding things. And one of the one of the things I always tell them is just use bombers. Like, don't, don't touch anything. Just get to bombers. Once you get to bombers, you'll know what to do. It's fairly simple from there. They're super overpowered. The AI doesn't know what to do against them. And once we started doing it in our Germany game, I thought, wow, I should take this save file and do a little bit of a, a tutorial on it. And that's where the inspiration for this video came from. After this, we're going to get back into the fifth episode of our Germany game so you can see what happened in this game when I did it for real. Also, we will be doing another tutorial in the next coming days. I realize this isn't a super complex and in-depth one, but it's more just there so people can realize that, hey, this strategy in the game is really good and you should do it. I think that's it for me. Again, thank you guys so much. It's been an absolute honor. And let's hop in to some destructive bomber tutorial gameplay. We are in the game now to show off the strength of bombers and how you guys can utilize them in your domination games to make quick work of the enemy. This is even a science game. You can utilize them in a whole bunch of different game types and you should be utilizing bombers. They are fantastic. This save file is almost identical to the save file that we are using for our Germany Wonderstar game. So if certain things look familiar, that is why. Just know that this is not the, save, the same save file. I've made a few different decisions in this one to set it up differently for this tutorial. The first thing we gotta look at when we take over bombers is just first look at the destruction. We had two bombers and like two units and Wukong and Hercules running around. Like this is not a fat army. And just having two bombers, a third one has arrived on the scene over here. We were able to take one, two, three of Gaul's biggest cities. And I wanna say this happened. You'd have to go back to the part four of our Germany playthrough to actually count. I want to say this happened in 12 turns, 12 to 15 turns. We were able to decimate three giant cities of our next door neighbor who's not doing bad, right? Even now he still has a decent amount of science and culture. He wasn't like out of the game or anything just by using bombers. The first thing you guys will need to know if you plan on using bombers as part of either your military or your science strategy is that you have to take a bit of a unique way through the tech tree initially. Eventually you get caught up, but because flight, aluminum, and advanced flight are all at the top of the tree, this synergizes well with rocketry, which you need for a science victory, which is also at the top of the tree. Research labs are here as well, but it heavily delays. If you want to do this in a timely manner, it heavily delays your attempt to come down for oil. So just know in a game where you need Eiffel Tower or you need oil right away or you need tanks right away or anything like that, you usually have to delay those initially, just initially. You can come back for them after to go for bombers. The earlier you get bombers, the more damage they are gonna do because the cities you will be attacking will have less defenses. So if you are coming for bombers, you're gonna need to come and rush flight, then into aluminum and then into bombers here. The key here is to not build biplanes. Biplanes do not upgrade into bombers. They only upgrade into fighters and fighters are not what we are going for here. Biplanes also require oil. So if you go here and then you want biplanes, you have to come back down to refining, get oil, come back up here and then go to bombers. This strategy revolves around coming straight for bombers like we did in this game. If you wanna see this in action, you can watch the Germany Let's Play series, but you need to come straight up here. You don't wanna dilly dally down by oil and biplanes or anything while you do that. Once you have aluminum unlocked and you are heading towards advanced flight, just make sure you have a source or two of aluminum. Each 
um, uh, bomber takes one aluminum. So we have three bombers right now. They are taking three per turn. Each aluminum node will give you two. So each aluminum node that you are mining will give you two bombers. And it takes it per turn. So you don't need to have a stockpile or anything. You just need to have the per turn aluminum to match the per turn takeaway of the bombers. So it's one aluminum per turn per bomber. Right? You can double each node to four. So right now we are getting six because we have some things doubled, I believe. I don't think we have six nodes. I believe we have some things doubled by the policy cards. We don't. Okay, I lied. We have three aluminum nodes, so we can upgrade that to 12. Either way, the same principle stands, right? That you can double up your aluminum through policy cards if you need extra aluminum and you also have one or you only have one or two aluminum nodes in your military. To build the bombers, you are going to need an aerodrome. So you can move the bombers freely between cities. Right, once you have them built, each city center can take one bomber and they will be highlighted green if you try to move it. If the city center like Letitia um, isn't uh, green, that either means it has another plane in it, which is the case here, or it's too far away. Sometimes your cities are too far away. Like, I can't put one in Nuremberg. I think it's too far away, but Hamburg and Dortmund are good. So if that makes sense, just be aware that if there's no unit, or no uh, aerial unit in your city and it's not green, it's probably just too far away and you can move it closer and then jump over to the city. But as you can see here, we're building the planes in the aerodrome and then we're moving them to city centers as we conquer these cities. So they're always in range. To attack with a bomber, you need to actually have vision of the tiles you are going to attack. So make sure you have some way to achieve a vision on the city you're trying to attack. Some of the best ways to do it are with the bombers themselves. They have a pretty big vision radius. Sometimes what I'll do is I will put a spy in the city that I want to attack because the spy will give us vision around it. The plane can hop over fog of war to attack a tile that you can see. I believe the range for planes. What's the range? Let's find out the actual exact tile range. As long as the tile that you can see is within 10 tiles, you're good to go. The range is 10, so you have 10 tiles, and as long as you can see the tile, you cannot see the first nine. As long as you can see the 10th, you're good to go. So we use spies in this game. We've put them in the cities to make sure that we can see the tiles we're trying to attack, which in this case is the city center. You can also use observation balloons. You can move caval cavalry forward. Sometimes we'll have a cavalry unit here that moves up. We attack with the planes and then it moves back. Just be aware that you do need vision. So even though some of these tiles here are in range of this bomber, like this one or this encampment, I can't attack them because I cannot see them. They are in the fog of war. When we started this attack, all of these cities had around 70-ish defensive strength. They still have around 100 right now, but once you have a couple of bombers on the scene, I like to go for four bombers, usually gets the trick done really, really fast. You can see just how painfully easy it is to attack cities with the bombers, right? We're just decimating Alessia and Rotuma Coast, and we don't even need an army here. We have Wukong, we have Hercules, and we have a swordsman, and that is our army. Once you take a city like this right here, you're gonna wanna move some of your planes up so you can keep them in range of where you're trying to attack next. So you can see the bombers, the more damage you do, the more damage the bombers do. So it's just a never ending cycle of getting more powerful. But even with around 100 strength, a couple of bombers still do a marvelous job. Let's take Wukong in here to take the city. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So now that we've taken this city here, we might wanna move some of our planes up. As we're building more bombers, I'm hoping for four in this game, we can keep moving them up to city centers like this. That's totally fine. We can also use military engineers to build airstrips. So military engineers can build airstrips on any flatland neutral tile and tile in your empire. I've never tried it on Tundra, but I know you can do it in desert. At least I have done it on desert before, unless they've patched it out. But as you can see here, we have a military engineer that I've set up just for this demonstration. And you can go up to a tile you own or a neutral tile. If I want to put one right here, I totally can, or right here as well. Nobody owns these tiles. Just be aware if you build an airstrip here and then Gull takes over the tile, your airstrip will go away. We had this happen to us this game with a city-state. If we built an airstrip on a tile and then the city-state grew over the airstrip and it went away, but if you click with a military engineer build airstrip 
It doesn't allow you to have or to build planes in the city. It doesn't replace an aerodrome, so I can still not build planes in the city. I need an aerodrome to do that, but it does help me move my planes around to keep them in range. The main reason this is fantastic is because it holds three planes, so you can always send a military engineer ahead of where you're going to attack or into a city you just captured, put down an airstrip, and your planes can move with you as you go for the attack. Bombers are also great at decimating enemy units. You can see that Gaul is trying to defend itself here. It's got a couple armies, it's got a couple core units, and we don't really have a military other than Wukong and Hercules right now. And we can just take our bombers and absolutely just be super destructive on their army here. So even if you come under fire a little bit, that's a field cannon army, not a unit that uh, we'd want to mess with normally. And there's just no chance against the bombers, which is why I prefer them over fighters. Bombers do it all. They attack cities really quickly. They just bamboozle enemy units so they can't really have a counterattack. And you can see this is all happening again. And I want to keep mentioning this without much of a land army. We don't have a huge army. It's not costing us a lot of money. We can just take cities with Wukong, Hercules, and governors. And that's perfect for us all right let's just see one more time what are, what are three bombers gonna do to retumacos here yeah this city's not lasting long you can it's just destructive i don't know how else to put it other than bombers are completely overpowered this game we didn't do any domination until we got bombers we got two bombers and now we own all these cities and we haven't done any we didn't do any domination up till around turn 200 so in 21 turns we have gained all of this land, all of these districts, all of this space, right? We've taken one of our main enemies out of the game, all, all because we had a couple of bombers. And we were even in this game. Gaul and us were even. We were not ahead of them. If anything, they were ahead of us. And there's just nothing they can do at this point to stop bombers. It is good to keep in mind, though, that the AI does have ways to stop bombers, and the ways that are most annoying are usually battleships. Battleships, they'll put them in lakes like these, or little areas around their cities, right? So a battleship in this lake will give anti-air to every tile around it, so just one tile adjacent, which means if I attack the city with a bomber and there's a battleship nearby, it's going to take about half its, half its health in damage. Right, so bombers and planes can be attacked just like other units, and they get attacked while they're attacking. So if I take this bomber and attack here, and there's a battleship in the way, that battleship will automatically attack me for half my health. Giant death robots do a similar thing with nukes. I'm sure you've had that happen to you, where you're nuking somebody who has a giant death robot, and because you can't see where you're nuking, the GDR is right next to it, and it just snipes the nuke out of the sky. I don't even know how that's possible. I do find, generally, though, the AI is painfully dense when it comes to anti-air they're not going to mount a bunch of anti-air weaponry anywhere like it's usually just battleships that get you and that is something they do know how to do and will do to prevent you from using your aircraft i'm actually surprised they haven't done it in this city but as you can see in a city like atawatika here uh there's no battleship that'll help you here you're just screwed anyway so bombards are also great for that or uh, bombers are also great for that reason is the ai seems very very terrible at at using them or at defending against them, sorry. Also worth noting, as you continue to go through the tech tree here, uh, jet bombers come up in stealth technology, so they're a little ways away. You get them a little bit after you get your bombers. Bombers should more than suffice for most of the game, but if you do want to upgrade to your bombers, they do exist. They're here, the jet bombers. The extra damage that gets done isn't too much, especially because the city walls tend to scale up at this point as well. But the extra range is really, really nice. So once you have nukes, if you really want to do a lot of destruction, having jet bombers is fantastic. So I, I usually get this upgrade. It's only about 200 gold to upgrade each bomber to a jet bomber as well. So it's not that expensive. So I recommend if your game is still going on by this point, get definitely grab this jet bomber upgrade over in stealth technology. I think that'll be it for this tutorial. It's not really a long or a complicated one. I really just wanted you to have this bomber strategy revealed for or revealed to you. And for those of you who don't watch the Let's Play, just to really see just how powerful they are how powerful they are in five turns in this tutorial we took what was that 70 percent of alessia and all of radimakos i didn't even bring hercules up here to take the city i wasn't prepared for this but you can pretend if i had brought hercules up there we would have radimakos and we have a third bomber that's already ready to attack the capital here and do some big damage so 
They're powerful. You should use them. I want this strategy now that we're doing it on YouTube in a game to be brought to light. And I want you guys to know that you, you can play a science game up until turn 200 and still use bombers as a relevant and good strategy to absorb more land, to absorb more districts, take out somebody who's kind of running away with the game. Now that's not to say this is a one size fits all, it'll work every game strategy, but bombers are a very powerful way to go ahead of the AI because they're not good at defending against them, because they're powerful in general, and because you do not need a big army to use them. You just need a little bit of aluminum and a city with an aerodrome and good production, and you are good to go because you can move the bombers to city centers, because you can move them to aerodromes with co or to airstrips, which cost you almost nothing. They're just versatile, they're great, and it's a wonderful strategy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me let me know what your domination strats are in the comments below. There's always a lot of people who ask me like, how do I win a domination game? And this is one of the answers to the question. Get bombers and bomb everyone is one of the quickest ways you can do it. If you did enjoy this video, like and subscribe button are there. You can let me know what you thought in the comments. We'll be back with our next Germany game soon, number five, where we see how this played out when I did it for real in the actual YouTube game. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.